Okay, so we actually, uh, this is Blake Ross, AKA B Ross here with my dad, Steve Ross. And we've actually already filmed uh, some stuff that I'm in the process of editing. Uh, planned on putting it out when it was done, but because of the news of Leon Black's decline in health, wanted to film something today to be able to put it out there today and share it with people while he's on everyone's mind and who better to do that with than Steve Ross, who's got, <laughs> you, well, you, you've known- uh, Coach Black forever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. And you said he's the definition of a lifetime longhorn. If you want to talk about, first of all, he is among the finest men I've ever known, period. His decency and his honesty and his integrity is only matched by his humility. Mm. That's part of what makes him mm. a lifetime long war. Yeah. Okay. Um, Leon was a three-year letterman in basketball back in the dark ages, yeah. before I knew about it. Uh, became an assistant coach under Harold Bradley in the early 60s and was named head coach in 1968. And he and Darrell Royal at the same time were making headway into desegregating Texas athletics. And because of Leon Black, the first real um, all-star African-American athlete was here. But there's even better stories about how we got to Larry Robinson. And that was, Larry Robinson predated Julius Whittier, correct? Exactly the same time. Uh, Larry was a freshman in 1970, 71. Uh, and as a freshman, I'll give you a quick thing about Larry. Larry was from Hobbs, New Mexico. Leon did a great job of recruiting in 68, 69. Hobbs, that's a basketball, hot, that, that, that's a uh, at that prestigious time, program. At that time, they were, they were it. They were it. Larry didn't start until he was a junior in Hobbs because they played 10 players a game, all the same amount. He'd substitute five at a time. Mm. And they pressed the whole time. Larry was being recruited by Kansas State because Kansas State was recruiting another one of their players. But Leon saw Larry as a perfect fit for Texas because A, his, his parents were educators. So he, could, he was able to sell them on the, the education. Yeah closer to New Mexico than Kansas State. Mm -hmm. You can come see him. And and there was some, and because he had, and I'll talk about Sam Bradley in a minute, because he wasn't the first African-American to letter for Texas basketball, the pressure wasn't as much either. All Larry did as a freshman, because they had freshmen, were not eligible, that right. time, was average 34 points and 17 rebounds a game. Wow, <laughs> okay, yeah. We'll go back to him, but, yeah. I, but, but I want to go back to what Leon did uh, to integrate Texas athletics. Yeah. When he was hired, Sam Bradley had a track scholarship. He was the first African-American to letter in track, but he was also a really good high school uh, basketball player. Leon got him to be a combo scholarship, which you could do at that time. Right. And he was the first black to letter in basketball. Yeah. Okay. Now, when he started to really upgrade recruiting, um, Leon had coached at Lon Morris Junior College before coming back to Texas. Jimmy Blacklock was out of the Houston metro area, great basketball area, African American, and he went to San Jacinto Junior College. Right. Leon thought he was the perfect fit for what he wanted to do. He was quiet, dependable, uh, and a great basketball player, but a really good student. So when he got Jimmy to sign as a junior college player, he plays in 70, <clears throat> 70 71 when uh, his freshmen were, were, were on the freshman team. team. Yeah. Jimmy was the leading scorer on the team and was voted captain by his teammates. Mm. That's the kind of guy he was. Yeah. Okay. Well, now uh, <clears throat> in 71, 72, Larry Robinson comes up from the freshman team. Well, so does Harry Larrabee. And Harry Larrabee was a 5'10 guard out of Shelbyville, Indiana, that Indiana didn't want. Uh, I used to say he looked like the Pillsbury Doughboy, <laughs> but he was an assassin. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, he was just a killer on the, on the court. So he had those two great freshmen. Now he had some other sophomores that from, from the Texas finally had some talent. Uh, Lynn Howden had been an uh, All-State, All-American in high school in Houston, gone to LSU, 6'7", 4". He transfers back to Texas. He has a 6'11", skinny uh, uh, center from Oregon, B.J. Brosterhouse. You know. Yeah, B.J. Brosterhouse, B. Yeah, okay. one, of the, one of the names. Right. He had Scooter Lennox, and Scooter Lennox was from, was from Texas, and his uh, brother was an assistant coach at a &M. But he came to Texas. Mm. Scooter was an off guard who thought passing was illegal. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah, he, he's pulling up from He's pulling board. up from anywhere. Yeah. Quality uh, depth from a 6'6 six, six forward out of Dallas, <clears throat> Aaron Grosskirk, and somebody you know, Dr. Jack Lewis. Yeah, yeah. He's I know him pretty well, yeah. Yeah, from Austin Reagan. Th those are the quality players that he had for 71 72. And they, they're very good. When they get to conference play, Jimmy is still starting and Harry is coming in. Leon notices that Jimmy's getting called for traveling a mm. lot. And he's, th he's kind of blaming the, the conference coaches because they're saying he, he's so quick that he's taking a step before, before he starts dribbles, to, right? And he's getting turnover after turnover. So Leon goes to both of them and says, I'm going to start Harry. And Jimmy, you're going to be coming off the bench. And both of them took it, I mean, handled it beautifully. Yeah. Harry comes in and Texas starts to win. Jimmy is the first man off the off the uh, uh, bench. And Harry and Jimmy talked about it before it happened. So they, and so there was no dissent among the right. team. Nothing. Okay. They tie, uh, Larry Robinson's the player of the year in, 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 uh, in uh, the Southwest Conference. They tie SMU for the championship. Well, that means they have to have a one game, one game playoff. playoff. And they hold it in Waco at that. Ugh. Yes, Heart yeah, of Texas yeah, Coliseum. Yeah. And the Tartan Floor is brand new. Right. The Texas worst. wins 91 to 89 Whew. in overtime. Wow. Uh, they don't know it until later. Larry Robinson has a broken foot. Yeah. And of course, that's the same Tartan turf. That destroyed Mike Wacker's knee. Mike Wacker's knee exploded. Oh, well, okay, yeah. well, Texas is in the tournament, and they're going to, and they're going to Las Cruces, New Mexico, to mm. the University of Houston. Now, Houston is not in Southwest Conference this time, right? And it's right, it's before Five Slam McCann. But they're good. Oh, they're really good. Yeah. Guy Lewis has them going. They had two forwards they called Double D. They were both from Houston: Dwight Jones and Dwight Davis. And they had some other people, quality people. They were twenty and six. They were easily ranked in the top ten. So they play in Las Cruces, and um, Houston pressed all the time. Texas turns the ball over quickly several times, falls behind, and I think Leon calls the best time out of his career. Mm. He says, simplify it. Larry, you throw it into Harry. Everybody else, get the hell out of the way. Go down, and Larry will break the press, get to midcourt, and we can run. go and, from there. And it worked. We stopped turning it over. We push, we press ourselves. Texas wins. Beats Houston. Beats Houston and has it in hand. Now here's, for those of you who don't like language, you need to turn away from me. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest things about it was, it was on TV, one of the, and, and um, one of the double Ds, I forget which one, I think it was Dwight Davis, fouls out with like a minute and a half to go when the game's over. Right? And Harry being from Indiana, you know, walks up to him and says, good game. <laughs> and they got a tight shot of him. And, and Dwight goes, fuck you. <laughs> and Harry goes, oh, good game. And he goes, I said, fuck you. <laughs> right there on camp. But anyway, Texas comes out of the game. Larry Robinson camps, oh, is hurt. Right. Lynn Howden springs an ankle. B.G. Brosterhouse hurts his shoulder. Uh, uh, there's so many people. Curry Kirkpatrick was the great sports writer for Sports Illustrated at the time, and he always did basketball. And he did the sweet. This was going into Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. He goes into Sweet Sixteen, and he and his article on the Midwest Regional was it was it was Louisville, Texas, Kansas State, and Louis 
he's the Ron Kruger. Ron Kruger was their guard. Wow. Uh, I, I was getting the end. You're, oh, you're, okay. You're, you're We're jumping ahead. Jumping ahead. <laughs> uh, and uh, Louisiana, it wasn't Louisiana Lafayette, it was Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns. Yeah, yeah, Louisiana Lafayette. Oh, yeah. they're Louisiana Lafayette now. They were just Louisiana something at the time. And he wrote, the Midwest is the Sweet 16 of the four seats. The Cards, the Cats, the Cajuns, and the Cripples. <laughs> So it was a pure victory against well, UNH. Leon had to play his zone if he was going to play. Couldn't uh, play his style. He, because he, he had to play, too many Lynn injuries. Howden and Larry Robinson couldn't play it. Yeah. Did that. Yeah. Um, they did and stayed in the game until about the last three minutes and, and Lon Kruger and, and Kansas State won 64 to 55 or something like mm, that. Yeah. But, and I, and I won't go over a lot of it anymore, uh, but in 74, when Larry and Harry are seniors, Texas has the toughest schedule in the country. I mean, it's a, a non-conference in the country. They're 0-8. And, mm. and, and they go to play in the Great West Tournament, and they lose to, like, Oregon, who's really good. And their Oregon coach said, that's the best 0-8 team I've ever seen. Right. And they win conference. Wow. Texas conference isn't very good, but they but, win. Yeah. And they go to the playoffs. And they lose to Creighton, who was coached by Eddie Sutton. Ugh. And Arkansas decides if he can beat Texas, Texas. come on down. So, and so they hired wow. him away from Creighton. Um, so <clears throat> here's the other thing I want, I want to talk about. Leon was so honest. There was cheating going on. And he turned a and in and was vilified. To his credit, Shelby Metcalf, who was the coach at a &M, and he and Leon were really good friends. Never, you know. They didn't go to war. No, absolutely not. He said, Leon's doing what he feels like he has to do. He's, he's a good man. And, and, but that's, that's who Leon was. Um, he had played with African Americans in the military. So he knew that he needed to do this to bring Texas into the 20th century. Right. We were, the, we were the last one. We were lagging behind we lagging everyone behind. else. And, and so he coaches a couple more years, and, and, and it's just the turmoil was so much. Daryl says to him, we're going to the Urban Center. I think we need a new coach, but I want you to you stay have a job. Right. Anywhere you want to do. And Leon, of course, resigns. Mm. The other quick story I'll tell about Leon. So that was what led to Abe Lemons. Well, I, again, you're going to have a story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my bad, my blunder. <laughs> of course, Daryl's the athletic director. And so we, we started a search. And, and this, is, this is a story about a journalism that uh, I wish more people would get nowadays. I was working at KBU at the time. I was graduate. I graduated and I got a full time job, and so obviously we're working on who they're going to hire. Yeah, um, I had a really, really good source inside the athletic department, and the night before he calls and says they're going to hold a press conference tomorrow and they're going to hire, they're going to announce the new coach. And I said, "Do you know who it is?" He said, "I have no idea, mm. but I can tell you who it is." It is an A Blevins. Now, I don't go with that because I can't confirm it. Right. Now, he's a great source. Yeah. But it's only one. So I didn't go with it. And so the next day, A Blevins. A Blevins is wow. an A Blevins. So I'm not, you know, I'm not embarrassed or not. Embarrassed. Yeah, good call. But <laughs> Leon, as I said, Jimmy Blacklock came. Oh, and Jimmy Blacklock. I can't believe it. Don't forget Blacklock went to play for the Harlem Globetrotters. That's right, yeah. And was their coach. Yeah, exactly. And was honored into the Hall of Fame for the Harlem Globetrotters, I think, in 2020. Wow. And he came back here, and he and Leon were honored at halftime. That's for great. The game. Yeah. So, what, Leon Black, this is the thing. Because of my background with you, I know uh, a lot more about... Texas basketball that predates me. Uh, I know a lot more about it than most people my age do. 
why isn't Leon Black a bigger name, a more well-known name in the, the, the history of Texas basketball? Because Texas basketball wasn't important back then. And he had two chances and both times injuries. Injuries stopped him. Stopped him. If he gets, if he gets to the Elite Eight, or the, or the final four that year with the, that team. And the, the 0 and 8 team started. Right. They had a great power forward, John Mark Wilson from Amarillo, who was kind of like Mike Wacker a couple of years earlier. He blows a knee out. I was going to say, I mean, so you, you've got to, uh, that's, it's like a recurring theme with Texas the that the, the, the best player is going down at the wrong time. And that, that you know, as you know, uh, with, uh, Mike Wacker, Abe Lemon said, okay. Exactly. And so it was two steps forward, one step back. Yeah. Two steps forward until Rick Barnes got here and was able to capitalize. What do you think, in your opinion, especially because right now we've got Coach Beard and his big thing is unite the family. That's the big hashtag is unite the family. Um, if, if, if it were up to you, we're opening the Moody Center soon. What would you do to honor and recognize Leon Black, either as far as a ceremony goes or as far as something more permanent goes? I guarantee you there's a lounge in there used for uh, study. I'd call the Leon Black. Academic at, at study the, hall. Lounge. Yes. You know, what, some, you'd yes. name the academic area yes. after Leon Black. Yes. Wow. That's, I mean, that's that's profound. That's, so his, so, Again, you call him just the most decent, kind, just model human being you want your kid to go play for. Yes. Where, where, what is his impact? Abe Lemons has the NIT. Rick Barnes has the Final Four. Right now, Chris Beard has a recruiting class. Define Leon Black's hallmark. What, what, what's his, what is the hallmark of his legacy? Sam Bradley, Jimmy Blacklock, Larry Robbins. Which leads to, you know, uh, uh, LaSalle Thompson. Right. Which leads to Kevin Durant. Which, I mean, TJ Ford. TJ Ford, to... right. So, <laughs> so then I, I guess my big takeaway from this then is it's, it's a shame that, that really if you weren't around for the Leon Black era, you might be a diehard Texas basketball fan, and you still might know very, very little about him. Yeah, and I and hope. Well, you know, I haven't been to the new, uh, you know, awards thing they have at the South. I, and I, I think they've got basketball in there as well. And I know they do at the at the at the Dooley Center. And so I I would hope that you get to get more of that there. But you know, uh, people have short memories. Now I think. Uh, with a new arena and obviously the emphasis on basketball, there's an opportunity to, yeah. to honor those who came before. Absolutely. Well, and we've got the Julius Whittier statue now, which I was there when they unveiled it. That was great uh, last year. Oh, Larry Robinson. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the, he was drafted by the Boston Celtics. One of the last cut by Red Hawk back at that year. And he sent him off to the suite to Europe to get some aging. Maybe Red Auerbach said. Yeah, go to Europe, play, let's see what you do. Like a lot of people, Larry went over there, was a star, and made him. a lot of money, got married, huh. played 10 years in Sweden, and then became an executive for Converse over there. Wow, uh, not bad. And one year he averaged 35 points a game. Wow, Travis Mays. Absolutely. Went to Europe, loved yeah. it. He rolls his ankle his second year, mm -hmm. goes to Europe. Wow. Well, I mean, are there, is there anything else about Leon Black? Any stories or, or, or just? He's just common decency. Yeah. He's common decency. He's, he's, he's uh, God, in today's, in today, could he exist in today's age of Scott Drew and John Calipari, Bill Self? Yeah. I mean, and I got respect for some of these guys. Oh, here. absolutely. But but the atmosphere is so slimy now. Right. He, could he even? He couldn't even exist today, could he? Well, that's a hell of a legacy to leave behind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate. I'm sure anyone out there who you know loves 
Texas Athletics and UT Basketball will appreciate it as well. So we'll do this again. To the lifetime. To Leon Black. Hey, hook him. <laughs>